So I'm back out in the garden one more time this season, probably on the chilliest day so far this year. And a lot of the leaves are starting to turn, as you can see on the maple back there. So nice. But um, I'm back today because uh, I set up another unboxing video. Uh, for those of you who have been following my recent uh, videos, you know that I am working on unboxing a whole bunch of vintage items that I bought on a trip through New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and West Virginia. And uh, I just decided to uh, take everyone along for the ride because uh, I had a car full and then some actually. So um, it was actually a couple weeks ago. I haven't dipped into these um, boxes yet. Um, there are a bunch sort of sprawled on the dining room floor and the floor of our front room. And I just need to get some stuff unboxed, cataloged, and put away for safety, either into the collection or for a future sale. So, um, so I have it set up today and that's what uh, we're gonna do. Okay, we're up on the front porch and it is probably time for all of my houseplants to come in for the season. I definitely need to get these inside before the temperatures drop anymore. And I definitely need to get all of these shrubs planted that I bought over the course of the year. So those are tasks for the upcoming week. But the task for today is to actually unbox some vintage. I've got this bag full of a really heavy assortment of items. I think maybe a lot of pottery because I did buy a lot of pottery on that trip. And then I have this box over here too, which is a little bit lighter. So I'm guessing there are a lot of ceramics. So if you join me for my last unboxing video, I unboxed a bunch of Halloween items that I purchased. I think this bag and this box include just a lot of general um, vintage ceramics and pottery. I don't think there's any holiday in here, but there might be. So um, I'm gonna set up uh, on the table here and hopefully we'll have enough light to, uh, to look at all these uh, great items. Okay, I'm all set up and the sun seems to be setting right over here in the background. So hopefully that won't give us any trouble in terms of light. Um, but I know a lot of you have mentioned that you like these uh, unboxing videos and because I have to unbox uh, all this stuff anyway, I thought I would just do it and share it with folks so you can kind of see the sort of vintage items that I gravitate toward, the things that I like either for the collection or for resale. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, you can see the sun is going to come through. It's actually quite pretty. Even if it even if it messes up the film for a while, I'm going to keep it there. Look at all those sunbeams coming down. I love it. So, um, so I am going to start unwrapping some things, and they're still in the paper. So once again, this might be a noisy video, but I'm just going to dive right in and uh, see what I got. Because quite frankly, again, I don't remember a lot of the vintage that I got. So this first item um is really wrapped up in a lot of layers um, and again i don't remember what it, oh now i remember what it is oh you know this is one of my things i can't say no to these when i find them these hand painted fenton custard glass fairy lamps i think they're just lovely um if you've ever been to a live sale with me you know that i i bring these quite often because I live in the land of Fenton right now. We find a lot of it, and I just think it's so pretty. I love the florals on them, and I love finding homes for them. Uh, if there was another collection I was going to start in my life, that possibly could be one of them, the Fenton Fairy Lamps. I am going to take a quick break and be right back. I'm going to see if I can do something about this sun. It is actually quite bright. Okay, I'm back. Nothing that another plant won't solve. So got another plant up there to block the sunlight. So I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna dig in. This is a little small package, still taped up. I actually try to ask the antique stores when I remember to not use tape when they wrap things up, um, just because I like to reuse, uh, I like to reuse the paper. Um, and I'm careful when I unwrap, so the tape really isn't that necessary. This is one of three little guys that I found that I love anything that's a critter that has vegetables with it. This is a little home co mouse and he is holding 
an ear of corn, and he's got a couple stuffed in the front of his of his overalls too, which I think is super cute. And if I remember correctly, he has two brothers. So I don't know where they are, or even if they're in this, uh, if they're in this, this might be one of them. I don't know, it's not. But I'll, I'll show you the other two when I get them. But I found a little package of another one of my favorite things, and these I collect and I keep. That is a little uh, pixie riding a snail. Um, and this is a common uh, design from Ceramic Arts Studio, but this one is actually the pepper shaker. You can see the little holes there in the back. So this is made by Ceramic Arts Studio, and there is the salt shaker. How cute are these? Love them. So these are going into the collection, definitely. And lately, if you followed me, you know that I have a big collection of ceramic pixies, and you know that I've been struggling because I don't currently have one place in my house where I can keep them. I did buy I did buy a cabinet, but it was taken over by another collection. Uh, so Chris and I have been talking about trying to find another, another, ooh, ooh, yeah, another um, cabinet for the Pixies. But I just remembered that I found this lady. I actually found one of her sisters too. How cool is she? She's a little covered dish, maybe a powder dish, I don't know. But how amazing is she? Look at that face. And she's got this fur collar all around her. She's completely ceramic. Um, no marking on the bottom. I wonder if she's maybe a dresser jar, maybe for powder or something. If any of you know, actually, can you just put it in the chat? Uh, I haven't researched her yet. And I don't know exactly what she is, but I think she's fantastic. Um, and if I remember, I got another one too. Let me see if I can find a similar size. Oh, here it is. Yes, I got her sister in blue. So a pink and a blue one. How pretty are they? Really pretty. Yeah, so if you know what they are, just drop it down in the comments. I would love to hear from you because my guess is maybe a dresser or a powder jar, but I don't know. Um, that's just what they look like to me. So up on the top of my box, I just found this guy. I found this in at the Springfield Extravaganza in Ohio. How cool is this little devil wall pocket? And I got this thing for, I think, $5. If you look closely, it was shattered. Um, it was in pieces. Lots of different um, lots of different places where it was glued back together. And uh, the woman who was selling it didn't think she'd ever find anyone who would purchase it. But uh, that all doesn't bother me. It's a pixie-like devil that's up a wall pocket and also with a flat bottom. Um, and it's going to look great in my collection. This is not something I would resell, but... I love it for my own collection. I also don't know who the manufacturer is, so I'm gonna to try to track that down as well. All right, uh, this video may be longer than I thought. I didn't realize there were so many. Oh, oh, oh. For all of you kitschy salt and pepper shaker lovers, now I remember I actually got picked up a couple really cool sets of salt and pepper shakers, including these really awesome pink elephants that sort of look like patchwork a little bit. They are marked they are marked Relco on the bottom, so they are Relco shakers, and I think they're fantastic. How amazing are those? I love them. So those will be coming for a live sale because salt and pepper shakers, other than the pixie and the Christmas ones, I don't keep in my collection. I get them to share with people. So what is this next? Oh, I found one of the brothers of the little uh, uh, home co mouse. This one's eating a little wedge of cheese, and I'm pretty sure there's a third one somewhere, and I think this might be it. I don't know how they got, oh yeah, and there's this little guy eating the carrot. So the guy with the carrot, the guy with the corn, and then the one with his eyes closed eating the cheese. I think these are so, so cute. I can't wait to share those with people who love, who love the home co. All right, what's next? I don't know what's next. This is what's so exciting. Oh yeah, this is another set of really kitschy, cute salt and pepper shakers um, that I, I haven't seen these before. I mean, I've seen this style of ceramic before, but I haven't seen them before. Look at these little bug people, you know, and I'm not even sure exactly what sport they're playing. It looks like a golf club or maybe a, I don't know, a field hockey, but the ball seems kind of big, but just look at the faces. They're so, so cute. This one did have a little chip on its wing, but I didn't care because I think they're so cute. These anthropomorphic 
flying insects, salt and pepper shakers. Um, I'm gonna do a little research on those too. I'm curious to see what people say they are and who made them, because I think they're pretty cool. Sorry for all of the paper noise, everyone, but um, it's a little windy outside, so I need to make sure it doesn't float away. Now I found two of these. I don't know where the other one is, but these are, um, what are they? They're anchor hawking, and I think they're super cute. I love stacking milk glass mugs, especially ones that have floral patterns on them. And uh, I know I got two, and I think this is the other one. It is. So a nice little cute stacking set, dehandled, uh, milk glass, anchor hawking, coffee mugs. Okay, so there's still a lot left in this box. I'm kind of surprised. I didn't think there was this. I bought a lot, clearly, when I was gone, including these really cute Commodore puppy shakers. How adorable are they? And they're red and green, so it'd be great for Christmas as well. They they were ones that at one point, they don't work anymore, at one point had the noisemakers on the bottom, um, but I think they're just adorable, and those will uh, come to a sale. And a whole bunch of the paper that I've been unwrapping just flew away. So I'm gonna have a fun time uh, going around the yard after the sale and picking up all the paper. But it will get reused, don't worry, oh my gosh. So I bought this thing because I think it's really cool. And I thought it was a barometer, and maybe it is a barometer, but I looked up online what the scale for a barometer is, and this scale is between um, 70 and 79. Maybe that is a scale for a barometer, but the ones online that I saw didn't look like uh, that was the same scale. But I do know that it's working because there is there's a needle that moves and then a needle that says stays stationary. I've kept the needle stationary and that needle has moved. So whatever it's measuring, it's measuring it. And I just thought it was really cool because of this mid-century look. Um, and it's a nice little size to pop onto someone's, um, onto someone's wall space and it is German. Um, so if anybody knows what this is, once again, I would really appreciate it if you could pop it down into the comments because I think it's pretty cool looking and it does appear to be functioning. All right, let me dive back into the box. Wow, the paper is, is everywhere right now. That'll be fun. Oh yeah, okay. So I also found some Norcrest ceramics. I found this deer, this beautiful Norcrest deer sitting down. There is that amazing Norcrest um, label on the bottom. And I believe I found a companion piece. Let me see. Yes, yes. So this one is lying on the ground. Also, also Norcrest. And uh, one of my frequent YouTube collaborators is uh, a deer collector and deer lover. So I will definitely be bringing these to a sale when I'm selling with Enamor Amy. So I also found this really cool thing. Speaking of my YouTube collaborators, uh, I found this um, sort of mid-century gravel art. This is all made out of little pieces of gravel. Underwater scene with these fish in the bubbles, which I think is just so cool. And another one of my YouTube collaborators, who I know you all know, uh, Jason at Mother Tucker's, um, and I uh, did a mermaid bathroom sale a while ago, and I think we're planning to do another one at some point in the new year. So I grabbed things that I think would look really cool in someone's in someone's uh, nautical or underwater related bathroom. And this is actually, as you can see, a pretty big piece. Okay, there are a few more pieces. Oh. I don't know why I didn't remember that I found these. I have two of them. I found the large sized, this one is the avocado green. This is the Viking duck, large size one. How amazing a find is this? Look how beautiful that sculpture is, the neck, the beak, the tail, and it is an amazing condition. So this is the Viking duck, standing duck, the avocado. And I also found, I also found the amber, amber duck. How beautiful is that? It makes such a nice, a nice pair. And if you don't know, the ducks from Viking come in multiple sizes. This is the largest size that the ducks come in. So, so pretty. Okay, so that brings me to the bottom of the first box. So what I'm going to do, because I do have to bring everything back inside, I'm going to stop here for a moment. I'm going to pack this box back up so I have room on the table. 
I'm gonna go grab that paper that has flown into the forest. And then I will be back to unwrap everything that is in the bag. So I'll be right back. Okay, and just like that, I am back. Back to un, uh, unpack the things that were in the second bag. I got a little workout, quite frankly. Some of that paper did go back into the forest. So I had to go down, there's a big drop down, but I got it all, don't worry, I got it all. We're gonna recycle it all. And I'm excited to see what's in this bag because I have a feeling that there's a lot of my favorite pottery company in this bag. Um, I did purchase a lot of McCoy pottery when I was in Springfield. Um, in the actual extravaganza back in um, last month, the most common thing I bought during the, during the event itself was pottery because there were a few booths that had a lot of McCoy. So um, I think there's some of that in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, just move the camera, and start in. Um, again, I see a few things peeking through the paper, but some of it, I just really don't know what it is. Oh, and I also forgot that I got some of these. Some of these diamond pottery um, uh, ceramic uh, animals that are molded after the um, Rempel squeaks. And this one is interesting because I've never seen, uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't had a lot of these in, in my years, but um, I've had a few. I've never seen one with a sticker on the bottom and the sticker says Rempel on it. Um, it says Rempel, it also says Diamond Pottery on it. So that's pretty cool. This is a little puppy dog. I don't remember all their names, but they all do have names. There are a whole bunch of animals and I think I got several. So I think there are some more in here somewhere. And this may be one of them. It is not. This is a McCoy piece I don't have yet. It is this gorgeous floral floral um, planter, marked McCoy on the bottom. And uh, this is not one, believe it or not, of the series of flower planters that they made. This is kind of a standalone piece. I've never found it before, and I'm super excited to put it into my McCoy collection. I love how glossy this glaze is, and I love all of the brown um, painting work that defines the leaves. Sometimes McCoy did a really intricate job uh, painting, like we see this one, um, and sometimes it was I don't want to say sloppy, but it wasn't as detailed as we see with this particular planter. And again, there are two planting spaces on this one. And here's one from, I saw this peeking through the paper. Here is one from that line I was just talking about. Uh, this is the Carnation uh, McCoy planter. Should have that nice, it does, McCoy mark on the bottom. And this comes from a flower planter series that McCoy did um, with carnations, uh, lilies, tulips, grapes, and hyacinth. Uh, and again, this is the carnation. It comes in multiple colors. I think I already have a purplish blue one, and I think I already have a yellow one. But when it comes to me and McCoy, you can never have enough. Duplicates are a good thing. Um, duplicates. This is not a duplicate for me. This is another McCoy that I do not own. And how beautiful is this? This one has a built-in saucer and a little bit of space on the side for the water to collect. It's really an interesting design. Um, I think it's beautiful and it is handled as well. And I think I'm gonna try to use this to plant a regular plant in soil and then hold an air plant here on the ledge. Super beautiful color too. Okay, so I think, I think this is gonna be a McCoy video. I've got a lot of it. I also got this one. I got this one at that discount warehouse. If you saw that video that I made, this is one of those um, those planters that I picked up. And yeah, this one is McCoy as well. So, so pretty. At some point, I probably need to do a little tour of my McCoy collection because it's been a couple of decades in the building uh, and putting it together. And I'm really excited about that. And this next one is also McCoy. And you may have seen this one because I posted, I posted it on Instagram. I found one of the super hard to find McCoy turtle planters. I may, may have found a second one now that I think about it. I don't know, it might be in this pile. But look at how beautiful the work on this beautiful piece of McCoy is. I love the turtles. Now, they made a bunch of different um, animals. The most prevalent were the frogs and then turtles, and then believe it or not, they also made an alligator, which I have one of. So I'm really excited to add that to the collection. Is this another one? I think this is another one. Might be a frog. 
Nope, this one is another turtle and it's actually a different design. Um, it's a really cool design on the back. It is a McCoy turtle, but um, as you can see, they are not the same. They are different from one another. And I'm super excited because one of the things I like to do is I like to use my McCoy uh, price guide, the old picture books that the prices aren't really relevant anymore. But I like to use those old McCoy books and check off all of the pieces that I have in my collection. And those are two that now I can check off. Okay, so um, what else is here? I've got another, another wrap piece here. Oh, yeah, I picked this guy up because I honestly don't know anything about it. It is a really interesting looking bunny. He, again, I don't know anything about it. It says L.S. Hazel, Dalton, Ohio on the bottom. And I just wanted to do some more, some more research into it because uh, I don't know if I'd actually call it kitschy cute, but it is... It is kitschy. I love the ears on it. I love the face on it. Um, yeah, I just want to learn more about it. And it's a big one too. So this may be uh, going into my Easter collection or maybe actually for an Easter, a sale around Easter. Now, unrelated to the pottery that I've been showing, I also, whenever possible, when they're affordable, I pick up books, uh, vintage uh, book uh, catalogs that I don't have in my collection. And I didn't have this lady head vase uh, book before and I often um, bring a lot of lady head vases to sales and I just like a uh, little reference to look them up and this is a book that I've been looking for for a while and I actually found it for five dollars at the Springfield Extravaganza. There was a vendor who had a bunch of books that was the one book that he had that I didn't have so I grabbed it. Okay, a couple more packages for this unboxing. Oh, this is pretty too. I don't know if you've all seen these before. These gorgeous little posy rings. They're called posy rings. They're sort of, a lot of people call them flower frogs, but, and that's, that's kind of what they are. They're meant to hold flowers, but I think the official term for them is posy ring. You would fill it up with water. I've got to clean it a little bit. And you would just put the blooms around, around the edges um, and maybe a candle or something in the middle as a centerpiece or a pedestal vase around the middle as a centerpiece. But this one is in really good condition. Um, it does have a marking on it that I will need. It's made in Japan. I'll need my magnifying glass to read what it says, but I think it's really, really pretty. So this is probably going to be featured. Posy rings will probably be one of the one of the topics that I cover when I do my flower frog videos um, about what they are, how you use them. Posy rings are are sort of in that family. Okay. Okay. I didn't. I was right. I did have. I did have some more of these, so okay. I can't get my hands on it. Um, so here is Frisky. Frisky is also um, a diamond pottery mold. This one is actually a planter, but they also do come in um, in uh, just ceramic figurines. And Frisky is the horse. This is made from the Rempel Squeak by Diamond Pottery, um, and it coordinates with that little puppy. Uh, these are from the same world. These live in the same world, the puppy and the horse. And again, there are other animals and I believe I found an animal. Here it is. I found one that I actually haven't had before. I actually have the goat and I don't know what his name is. I need to look it up, um, but this goat is also a planter. So both the horse, Frisky the horse and the goat are planters. And again, they all come from that same line of, of diamond pottery that are modeled after squeak toys that were made by that company named Rempel. It actually looks like I'm getting down to the end. I can already tell by the way this one is packed that it is a planter, probably McCoy because you know me. And it is, it's, uh, it's, a, it's one that's gonna complete a pair for me. I have one already in this size. It is a McCoy a yellow bamboo planter and it's got that beautiful bamboo uh, look on it. And again, I already have one of these and I love these little ones that have saucers when they're in pairs because then I can put two of the same plant in them. What else? Here is, this one's unwrapped. I have one of the large McCoy basket weave planters. Obviously this one, as you can see, is in the green. These are super collectible. I got this out of steel. I think it was just a dollar or two because it has been repaired. But uh, for me, the important part, the place where I'm going to put a plant has not been repaired. It was just the saucer. So 
this goes into the collection. I love it. This will hold a plant. Um, with most of my vintage planters, I don't plant directly into the planter. I plant into a nursery container, which then goes into the planter. So I'm not worried about those cracks at all because the water will never touch the ceramic. Okay, I am down to the last, the last object for this video. And it's a big one. What is this? Oh, I found this at the Springfield Extravaganza as well. Does anybody recognize this? Are there any Wade collectors out there? Wade Ceramics, Wade of England collectors? This is actually Noah's Ark. And this is actually a display stand to display the 10 or 12 Wade figurines, the little ceramic figurines that are in the Noah's Ark collection, including there's one that's Noah and his wife. And I was so excited to find this because I have those figurines. I have the whole collection of figurines that go with the Ark. I just never had the Ark itself. And this is in really good condition. Look at that, it says it right there, the Ark. Um, so I'm gonna actually put the whole collection together and bring it to, to a sale one day to see if someone's interested in just grabbing the whole thing at once. So it's this and all of the animal figurines that come along with it, as well as Noah and his wife. So. If you're interested, look out for that in the future because it's going to be really fun to put that together and to bring that. Okay, everyone, that was another unboxing video. I still, if I'm being honest, I haven't touched the dining room yet. There are probably eight more bags in there and a couple boxes. A lot of that, though, is vintage Christmas. And in the next week or two, I'm gonna start working on getting my vintage Christmas out because it is going to be a Christmas live sale season coming up pretty soon. And while I keep a lot of my Christmas, I do share I do share a lot. I have a lot of duplicates and triplicates of some vintage Christmas items. So I'm gonna start unpacking those things probably next week. And I'll just go ahead and film it in case anyone wants to watch it. Um, I know on this trip through those four states that I mentioned earlier, that probably half of what I bought was Christmas. Um, and you've already seen two unboxing videos that had no Christmas in it. So um, there's a lot of Christmas to unpack. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do it outside in the future. I love being out here to do it in the garden, but it is a bit nippy today, a little bit windy, and uh, we'll see. Um, hopefully I'll be able to spend a little bit more time in the garden. Hopefully I'm gonna get all those plants planted as well. All right, enough of that, enough of worrying about the garden. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and thank everyone for watching the video today, for hanging out with me. I hope this was a fun kind of uh, look at some vintage items, um, at least ones that I love and hopefully some things that you all love as well. Uh, if you're a subscriber to my channel, I really appreciate you, you uh, sticking around and watching my videos. Um, I really do appreciate that. And if you're not subscribed yet, maybe you could consider giving a subscription to the channel. Just really gives me an indication that I'm going in the right direction. Um, again, if you'd like, please give the video a thumbs up. Love you for to leave a comment below, especially if you know anything about anything that I showed today. Um, and that would be super fun to read. I do try to get back to everybody uh, who comment on my videos. So everybody, I think that's it for now. Once again, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.